How's it everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Game Nights. This is an exciting one. We have the biggest guest that we have ever had on the show. What's going on guys, it's Posty. You may not have heard, but I'm a huge Magic fan and I'm so excited to be here on Game Nights. And yes, I look a little bit weird. My temporary teeth fell out. You'll probably be seeing my new teeth by the time you see this episode. But I am still cute, so uh, let's party. This is crazy. I've been a huge fan of Post Malone for years, and it turns out he's been a huge fan of our content for a while, too. He's got three American Music Awards, six Grammy nominations, 10 Billboard Music Awards, tons of chart-topping songs like Circles, Congratulations, and he's here to play on game nights. And if it wasn't enough that we have a huge celebrity in the house, in this game, we're also gonna have access to the new cards from Modern Horizons 2. This is a really high-powered set, has a bunch of awesome reprints, including the Zendikar fetch lands. But there's a whole ton of newly designed cards for the modern format, which means they're very, very powerful, and I think a bunch of new staples for Commander. The deck I built today is Asmorano Martica Dice Nicoldicar. Order up, let's go! Yes, that's really the name. So this deck is all about generating value from discarding your cards, sacrificing your creatures, and recurring them to the battlefield or my hand over and over again, and then crushing my opponents with all that value. And today I'm playing Mariaki Rebreed. Join me forever. I'm still not quite sure how to say it, but it is one of my favorite commanders to play. I built this deck based around my commander's ability. So I have a lot of enchantments, a lot of artifacts, a lot of cards to help me. Untap her to just go nuts and try to uh, kill my opponent's creatures or use them to my advantage. And there really is nothing like killing your opponents with their own stuff. And the deck I'm playing today is my own personal deck, Zancha Sleeper Agent. You didn't think we were friends, did you? This deck is all about manipulating my opponents. It's chock full with nasty enchantments that incentivize them to focus on each other. Hopefully, they'll use Zancha's activated ability to whittle each other down. And then I have some big heavy hitters to come in for the kill. The deck I'm playing today is Garth One-Eye. Let's do this old school. So this commander allows you to cast a lot of the OG cards from Magic's history. These are a lot of the cards that I remember playing with when the game first came out. So it has that nice nostalgic feel. But you have to tap Garth in order to do that. So the deck is also full of a bunch of ways to untap him so I can use him multiple times. If I'm already untapping things, I may as well add in a bunch of other creatures that tap to do stuff and really take advantage of that cross synergy. All right, let's do this. Okay, let's get cooking. All right, let's rock. Let's get weird. All right, welcome everyone to the table. Posty, this is your first time on the show, so you know what that means. Ashlyn, we do the honors. Would I? I dub thee Sir Posty. All right! Yeah, buddy! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and that just leaves one thing. Oh. Welcome to Game Nights. Only, Only one may stand. All right, everybody ready? Yes. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Okay, I will draw my card for turn, and then I'm gonna play a Sulphur Falls tapped and pass the turn. Sir, I will draw for turn. I will play a Reliquary Tower, tap it, and then play a Soul Ring. Oh. First seven cards, pull the Soul Ring, and uh, it feels very fancy. Oh yeah, someone's always gotta have that turn one soul ring. Turns out Posty is here to play. Got right. there! It's gonna be that kind of game, let's go! <laughs> I'll take it, man. Yeah. And I will pass to you, Jim. Okay, Doki, I will drop a turn. Okay, I'll play a Canyon Slew tapped and then pass to you, Ashlyn. All right, I will draw for turn. I'm gonna play a Smoldering Marsh tapped and Ooh. pass. Oh, nice. All right, I will untap, I will draw for the turn. I'm gonna play an Arid Mesa. I'll immediately crack it. Okay. Go to 39. I'll find a Temple Garden, which will enter the battlefield untapped. So I'll take two more and go to 37. And then I'm gonna tap the Temple Garden for a white, and I'm gonna play a new card, Esper Sentinel. Wow. Oh yeah. This is a sweet new card from Modern Horizons 2. It's hard to believe that it's in white. Usually early in the game, players are developing their boards and putting out extra ramp. That's almost always non-creature spells, so I'm looking to draw a lot of cards. It's basically a one-cost Rhystic Study, and that sucks for everybody. Uh, and with that, I will pass the turn. Sir, I will untap, draw for turn, and then I am going to tap out and play Sift. 
Ooh. Ooh. Draw three disco one. When you cast that, that's going to trigger my Esper Sentinel. Uh, do you want to pay one? I will not. I cannot. Okay. <laughs> then I'll draw a card. <laughs> and I'll draw one, two, three. And discard a planes. And then, Jimmy, I'll pass to you. Okay. I'm going to untap. I'll draw for turn. Uh, I play a Swamp. I will tap one and play the Witch's Oven. Oh. This is a great card in my deck because my commander cares about food tokens. There's also a lot of recursion in my deck, so getting creatures into my graveyard is a top priority. Uh, and Jimmy, when you play that, do you want to pay the one? I will pay the one. So I will not draw. Yep. Uh, and now pass turn to you, Ashlyn. All right, I will untap and I will draw my card for turn. And then I'm going to play a Badlands and I will play a Rakdos Signet. And Ashland, uh, that's going to trigger my Esper Sentinel. Would you like to pay one? I can't pay the one. All right, I will draw. <sighs> it's a non-creature spell, so I have to let Josh draw a card here, but I have to advance my board. What am I going to do? Not play my cards? So we're only one rotation at the table. I've already drawn two cards off my Esper Sentinel, really showing off the power of that card. Hopefully, it'll continue to pay dividends as the game progresses. And then I will uh, pass turn. Okay, uh, I will untap. I will draw. And then I'm gonna play a Sun Petal Grove, and then I'm gonna tap three, and I'm gonna play a Selvala Explorer Return. Nice. Cool, cool. So this is a really interesting creature. It makes all the players draw a card, no matter what happens. But if I get lucky, I might get two, three, even four mana out of it and gain some life. Plus my deck is all about untapping things, so there's a good chance later in the game I'll be able to use this more than once per turn. Uh, and then I guess I suppose I should think about attacking and I will go to combat and Jimmy, I'll swing at you for one. Unbelievable. Ooh. I'll take the one. This is what happens, Posty. You know, you think you're friends with someone, you work no, with them I for understand years, that. and then I they come at you for one, just yeah, out of nowhere. Right. I don't think he mean, meant anything yeah, it's by a good point. it. Yeah. But I what he know. said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Posty, your turn. Sir, I will untap and draw for turn. Oh, oh wow, he's way too happy about oh. it. I'll play a planes. No, I just think it's funny. Okay. I will tap an island and tap a soul ring and play Ristic Study. <laughs> <laughs> the Rhystic Study is really, really awesome, especially with Relicary Tower. If nobody wants to pay for it, then I'm just going to pull as many cards as I want. Josh is already asking everyone if they're going to pay one for their spell, and now Post Malone's going to do it as well. I'm pretty unhappy right now. When you cast that, that's going to trigger my Esper Sentinel. Would you like to pay one? I'll pay the one. <laughs> How dare you? It's with mine, man. <laughs> hey, man. Um, and then, um, Jimmy, I'll pass to you. All right, I'm going to untap, and then I will draw for turn. Um, I will play a Dragon Skull Summit. I'll tap all my lands and cast Forboding Fruit. Cool. That was three black mana, so that will trigger Adamant. And I get to create a food token. Ooh. It's on flavor, because I'm a food deck. I get it, flavor, food. Yeah. My card draw isn't as impressive as what everyone else is doing, but I do get to make a food token along the way, which synergizes really well with my deck. That is your first non-creature spell, Jimmy, so would you like to pay one for my Esper Sentinel? I cannot and will not. Okay, I'll draw a card. I'm going to ask this a lot, hopefully, during the game. Uh, will you pay for this uh, beautiful Rhystic Study, sir? I am not going to pay for Rhystic Study, so you may draw. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'll pass turn to you, Ashlyn. All right, I will untap everything and then draw for turn. Okay, um, I'm going to play a Rexian Arena. <laughs> Ah. Okay, so this card's gonna allow me to draw cards as well. Probably not as much as Posty and Josh, but it's gonna allow me not to fall as far behind. All right, that's your first non-creature spell, so uh, do you wanna pay the one for Esper Sentinel? Nope, draw that card. You have the one floating. I know, I need it. Okay, I will draw. Would you like to pay for Rhystic Study? No, you, go ahead and draw that card. Thank you very, very much. Okay, well, what are you gonna do with that one last mana? With that one last mana, I'm gonna play Curse of Opulence. Ooh. Wow, okay. This card's great because it's going to incentivize my opponents to attack each other. And then I'm going to get gold, which is going to allow me to cast more and more spells. Now, who am I going to choose? Josh? <laughs> cool. Enjoy. Yeah, so this curse landing on me is bad news. It means I can't get gold tokens and everybody else is now incentivized to attack me. But life goes on. What can you do? First of all, thank you. You're welcome. Second of all, that's actually your second non-creature spell, so it doesn't trigger my Esper Sentinel. Oh. But it will trigger my Rhystic Study. And I can't pay for that. Sure. 
Ristic study, Ristic study. Come on, guys. Ristic study, Ristic study. Oh, and that's my turn. Go ahead. Okay. I will untap. I will draw. All right, so I'm going to start the turn by tapping Selvala, which means we're all going to reveal the top card of our deck. I'll hopefully get some mana and gain some life, and then we'll all draw those cards. Nice. All right, so let's reveal the top card of our deck. So mine's a spark double. Mine's a marsh flats. I have Garden of the Blood Flame. Treasure Nabber. All right, so that's three non-land cards, so I get three green and gain three life. But the good news is those all go into our hands. Oh. Exactly what I needed is uh, more land. More right land. <laughs> all right, I'm going to use two of that green I have floating, add a white to it, and I'm going to play Battle for Bretagard. Ooh. And that'll make a 1-1 one, one white human warrior creature token. Named. <laughs> Named uh, Simon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So this card maybe doesn't look like much because it just makes little things the first couple of turns, but on that third turn, it makes copies of a bunch of my tokens. And I'm hoping at that point, I'm gonna have some tokens that are a lot better than just one ones. Uh, Josh, will you pay for Ristic Study? Right. I believe that I am going to pay for it. I'm gonna use the one I have floating from Silvala to do it. Wow. Why? All right, then I'm gonna play a Blood Crypt untapped. So I will take two, go to 38, and then I'm going to tap three, and I'm gonna play a Kelpie Guide. Nice. So my commander wants to tap to do his thing. And the great thing about Kelpie Guide is that can untap my commander and I can use it twice a turn. But also in the meantime, I can just use the Kelpie Guide to untap lands or other important things and get value out of it that way. So just a really versatile card. Kelpie Guy. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's this guy's name? At first I swear I heard Josh saying Kelpie Guy. You know, like a guy covered in kelp. That, he's a, not, his name's Kelpie Guide. <laughs> Kelpie Guide, Guide. Like he leads you through things, guide. Kelpie guy! <laughs> and then I do not have the mana to pay for a six study, so sure. post it, you can draw. I will draw. And I will go to my end step, and I have eight cards in my hand, actually. So I'm going to discard an island and then pass the turn. Oh, uh, yeah, I haven't discarded in so long. <laughs> <laughs> that reliquary it's tower. Been ages. So that reliquary tower from Posty really doing a lot of work here. All those cards he's drawing off Ristic Study, he doesn't have to discard them, which is a pretty big game. I have uh, so many cards in my hand. Okay, I will play a swamp. And then I will tap a swamp, a plains, and an island, and bring my commander out. Oh. Nice. I chose her because I love the ability to keep taking creatures, and I'm hoping that later on in the game, I can just gain control of something pretty powerful and try to take Jimmy out first. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will tap for three colorless and play a Staff of Domination. Boy, this might be one of the best cards in post deck because he can now really make use of his commander to the max. He can tap it to steal something, untap it with the staff, kill that thing, and then steal something else. If left unchecked, this could take over the board. So it's awesome to see Staff of Domination come out early and so I can just manipulate the battlefield any type of way I want. Okay, well, Staff of Domination is a non-creature spell. Would you like to pay one for my Esper Sentinel? I cannot. All right, I will draw a card. And Jimmy, I will pass to you, sir. Oh, lovely. I will untap, I will draw for turn. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start things off by tapping a red, and I'm going to cycle Forgotten Cave. Okay. So that means I discard it and draw a card. He very clearly discarded something, so I think we know what's happening here. Mm. And because I discarded the card this turn, I'm gonna cast my commander for one black mana. Wow. Hmm, spicy. Nice, nice. Cool. And my commander's name is... So try and say it into the camera for me. You don't get to practice. Ah! <laughs> Asmoran no Mardika Dystina Kuldakar. Asmorano Mardikaida Discalando Mac Galacticar. Asmorando Mardikar Distartanakar Calderkar. Okay, say it again. As do my Distin Distina Kuldakar. Asmoranda Detainer Delta Caldakar. Asmorando Mardikaida Lacticalakar. Pretty sure I got it. The card should just be called My Commander. <laughs> <laughs> Asmaranda Mardikadice Nicole the Car. What? What's so hard about that? 
uh, when my commander comes into the battlefield, I get to look for my library for a card called the Underworld Cookbook. <laughs> And I'll reveal it and put it into my hand. Cool. One of the great things about my commander is that you can build around the cookbook because you know you're gonna get it every time you cast her. So you can build around it, discard cards to make some food tokens, and then recur my creatures. It's easy. Are you gonna pay for Ristic Study? Um, I will not pay for the Ristic Study. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, and then I will tap a Dragon Skull Summit to play the Underworld Cookbook. Cool. There are two triggers on the stack. I get to decide who gets to draw a card here, basically. I don't have Reliquary Tower, so I can't keep all the cards in my hand. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for the one against you. So you can draw a card, Josh. Oh, wow. He Only wanted, because- He wanted you. He wanted it. Yeah, yeah, he needs it, he needs it. I will draw a card. I have eight cards in my hand, so I'll discard the hand size. Anyway, that will do it for my turn, so I'll pass it to you, Ashlyn. Okay, I will untap all of my cards, upkeep. Phyrexian Arena will trigger, and I will lose a life and draw a card, and then I will draw for turn. All right, well then I am just going to play my commander, Xantia Sleeper Agent. Loyalty, sounds like your problem. Okay, so who are you gonna give Zancha to? Post Malone's actually the scariest player to me right now because he has quite a grip of cards and he just put out the Staff of Domination, so I'm gonna give it to him and hope the other players can use it to start ticking down his life total. Posty, Zancha, Zancha, what don't that? you want to Zancha, Thank you. Zancha. I'll take a Zancha. I don't know specifically why I'm targeted with the commander. It might be because I have the most cards in my hand, but it's a lot of mana to activate and I have 40 health, so I'm not really worried about it. Okay, I'm glad that she gave the Zantra to Posty because I really didn't want to have it, but she still did give me that Curse of Opulence. So Ashlyn, don't act like you're my friend. Are you going to pay for Ristic Study? Uh, yes, I will pay for Ristic Study. And that's all I will do for this turn. I will pass. Okay, I will untap, I will draw for turn, and my saga will go up to chapter two, which means I will create an elf warrior creature token. Named? <laughs> Garfunkel. Gar Simon and no! Garfunkel! <laughs> it's too easy, gosh! <laughs> oh. All right, I'm gonna start by tapping Selvala. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing. We'll reveal the top card of our library. So I got Brudeclad. I got a swamp. I got a bag of holding. I got cut two ribbons. That was three non-land cards, so I gained three life, going to 41. All right, so those all go into our hands, and I have three green mana floating. I am going to play a Godless Shrine for turn. Deals two damage to me because it's coming in untapped, so I go to 39. All right, and then I'm going to tap a blue and use two of my green, and I'm gonna play Windfall. Oh. So this is great, I'm gonna draw a couple extra cards, but it also means that everybody's gonna immediately catch up to Post Malone as far as cards in hand, and I think he'll be less of a threat then, hopefully. Ugh, are you gonna pay? <laughs> Oh, we get to draw one extra card if I don't. No, I'm not paying. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we all discard our hands and we're gonna draw 13 cards. All of us draw 13? Yeah. Oh. Whoa, hey, hey, you know what? That's an upgrade. It's almost like we all had Ristic Study this whole time. Eh? Feels good, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was chilling. I had uh, some pretty uh, badass plays in my hand. Like Rise of the Dark Realms. And that's a pretty big win con in my deck and I gotta try and find a way hopefully to get it back. I love this card right now. I want things in my graveyard because I can just get them back later. Okay, uh, then I'm going to tap my Kelpie Guide and I'll target my Sulphur Falls to untap it. Nice. And then I'm gonna tap red, white, blue, green, black and play my commander, Garth One-Eye. Let's do this old school. What a cool commander. So here it is, my commander, a brand new card from Modern Horizons 2 and a super cool one. Basically it allows you to cast copies of all these famous OG cards from Magic's history. And my deck's set up pretty well to take advantage of it because I can untap it multiple times in a turn and really get a lot of value out of it. Josh's commander's pretty awesome and uh, the awesome thing about my commander is that I can have it. So I'm gonna try and uh, figure out a way to uh, make Garth Brooks work for me. Uh, and I do have that one green still floating, which I will use to pay for the Ristic Study. Sure. Then I'll go to my end step and I have 12 cards. So I will discard three lands, a Chitter Spitter, and an Anger. Oh. oh so you can use haste now. Yeah. Ooh, putting Anger in the graveyard is great because it gives all of Josh's creatures haste. 
which means that he can activate his commander's ability right now without having to worry about summoning sickness. Yeah, and that's it. Posty, go ahead. Okay, I will untap, and I'll draw for turn. And then I will play a command tower, and I'm gonna tap Miriaki, and I'm gonna grab Garth. Ooh, Ooh, Garth Brooks over there, sir. Okay, well, in response, I guess I better use him since he has haste now. I will tap Garth. And the only thing I'll be able to do is create a black lotus. Oh. <laughs> Seems good. The only thing I'm going to do is make a black lotus. Well, I, I have to pay for the spell, whatever it is, and I don't have any mana. Well, congratulations, Josh. I have a very nice black lotus for you. Oh! Is this real? Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Listen, if you're here for the first time watching our content, probably because of Post Malone, <laughs> if, if it looks like fun to you, if the game of magic looks like something that you might want to try out yourself, well, you're in luck. That's right, we just released a video called Learn to Play Magic. It's right there on our video feed if you click through to our channel, and guess what? It teaches you everything you need to know to get started to playing magic. This game is honestly one of the most fun games in the world. You don't want to miss out, especially if you're liking what you're seeing. And there's a special thing going on right now. If you download Magic Arena, links are in the show notes. You get a bunch of free cards by entering the promo code Game Nights, all one word, anytime before June 28th. Again, links are in the show notes. You want to take advantage of this offer. And uh, let's be honest, if you do learn to play Magic, there is a non zero chance that maybe you could sling spells with Post Malone someday. Yeah, look at us. We did it. Ah, you could too. Make sure you click the video. Hey folks, it's me, Garrick. This is a very important summer for me. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I kind of spent some time in the thrall of a horrible curse that turned me against my fellow planeswalker. It wasn't a great look, but I'm all fixed up now. I'm curse-free and ready to show the world new Garrick. That's why I'm using Mac Weldon to build myself a new look. Now, I haven't worn a shirt in like uh, 12 years, so it's safe to say my wardrobe has been in dire need of an upgrade. Luckily, Mac Weldon makes looking good more approachable than ever. With a wide selection of wardrobe staples, Mac Weldon has helped me look more clean cut ugh, and stylish without having to spend too much money. Now, putting together a cool outfit is like second nature. And as a planeswalker, I'm big into loyalty, so I was thrilled to learn about Mac Weldon's loyalty program. At the first level, you'll get free shipping, and once you reach the second you'll get a cool 20% off of everything you order for an entire year. Now, thanks to Mac Weldon, when people see me, they wave and say hi instead of running and screaming. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Knights and enter the promo code Knights. That's Knights with a K. Again, MacWeldon.com slash Knights with promo code Knights. Well, congratulations, Josh. I have a very nice black lotus for you. Oh! 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 Ooh, it's that? not a real Black Lotus. Oh. It is an International Collector's Edition. Still made by Wizards of the Coast, but uh, very much looks like a real Black Lotus. Yeah. Yeah, that works as a Black Lotus token. And when you do that, are you casting the spell? Yeah, yes, yes I am. Okay, I won't pay for Rhystic Study. You won't pay. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I will draw. I have the most famous card in all of Magic on my side of the battlefield. That's true. Which, yeah. I don't know if it takes the edge off of losing my commander. Here you go. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I get the first ever Black Lotus on game nights, but I can't really celebrate. I got too much on my mind right now. My commander is now controlled by Posty, and I gotta figure out some way to kill it, get it back to my command zone so I can play it again. Not the best position to be in. Um, I'm going to tap my soul ring, tap reliquary tower, play a sword of feast and famine. Oh Ooh, spicy. I'm happy that I'm able to play sword of feast and famine. I basically get to play double the spells every turn if no one has any blockers. That's a pretty awesome card. Esper Sentinel's gonna trigger when you cast that. Uh, would you like to pay one? I will not. All right, then I'll draw. And then I will pay two. To equip Sword of Feast and Famine onto uh, Xantham Gum, Xantha, <laughs> Sleeper Agent. So she's a 7-7 seven, seven now? She's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Pro yeah. black green. The good thing here is that he attached Sword of Feast and Famine to Xantha, and she can't attack me. But he'll still get to untap his lands, which is pretty bad. And then play Lightning Greaves. Oh. Wow, this card is really, really good for him on so many levels. One, it protects his commander. But two, it can give haste to anything he steals. It's just doing everything he wants to do. This is not a good sign. And then I will equip Lightning Greaves Ooh. to Mariaki. Cool. Nice. Um, I one drop. You want to sword something? What did you just say? I'm going to tap a command to replace swords to flash air. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sweet version oh, of that. Oh, yeah. beautiful. And exile. Asmoran no more because Dyson 
Best in a cool car. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a little upsetting that Post is targeting my stuff with that sword, but at the very least, I can get a little value out of my commander before she leaves the battlefield. In response, I will tap the Underworld Cookbook, and I will discard a reassembling skeleton, and I get to create a food token. He has two foodies. So you can just basically kill any creature. Do I want to kill the Savala? That seems like it's getting a lot of value. Savala's drawing everybody cards. We have. Yeah, Helping you now. keep up. Uh, and ramping you by three or four. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to activate as Miranda Mardika dies the Cold Card's ability to sacrifice two foods. And I'm going to go ahead and serve a nice piping hot meal to your Savala, Josh. She was exploring in an unknown place, and she just didn't know what she should eat and what she shouldn't. That bidet's putting in work. <laughs> Before the Sword Supply Shows resolves, I'm actually going to use my Witch's Oven and stick the actual chef in it itself. So as Miranda Mardika dies to Cold Card, dies to Witch's Oven. And then I get a food token. That's tasty. So that means I will not gain the life from Swords of Plowshares. Fizzles the spell, but same outcome. Yeah, same okay. outcome, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, I really want to get that Rise of the Dark Realms out of my graveyard. Josh's commander has some pretty good synergy with the Staff of Dom, so let's try and manipulate this and make some funky stuff happen. I will go to combat, come at Jimmy for a big, big old heaping seven. That is a seven damage I cannot block, so I will take seven and go to 30. And that is commander damage from Ashland's commander. And because I got hit by the sword, that means I'm gonna have to discard a card. I will discard the Wheel of Misfortune. Oh. Nice. And then I will untap all of my lands. Ugh. And then I will play a Phyrexian Metamorph. And I'll pay the two life so it only costs three mana. Ooh. Oh. And that will enter the battlefield as a copy of Black Lotus. Oh. This is a little bit weird because it costs three mana and two life to cast the Phyrexian Metamorph. And the Black Lotus that he copied only gives him three mana. So why not just use the three mana to cast whatever it is that you want to cast with the Black Lotus? I don't get what's going on here. I will sack my Black Lotus for three green mana. And then I will tap a Swamp and Command Tower. Okay. And then I will activate Staff of Domination. And I will untap Garth One Eye. So I have two green mana floating. Okay, I think I know what you're gonna do. I will put my Lightning Grease onto Garth. And then I will tap Garth One Eye for a regrowth. Wow. Ooh. What are you getting back? I will get back Rise of the Dark Rock. Oh boy, yes. oh boy, oh boy. Ooh, this is super scary. Post found a really cool line to regrowth back that Rise of the Dark Realms. I'm not looking forward to when he casts this because it is gonna do a lot of work. This windfall is just looking worse and worse because we just discarded our hands, which means there's gonna be a ton of creatures in the graveyard, which is going to be awful when he casts his card. Woohoo! And then equip Lightning Greaves to Mariaki. Sure. I think that's just about it for, for Hot Daddy here, and I will pass to you. All right, thanks, Daddy. Okay, I'm gonna untap. And drawing my card for turn. Okay. I think it's time to put the, the engines on, right? Just start going. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm going to tap two mana and cast Animate Dead. Oh. And I'm going to target your Brutaclad, Josh. Interesting, okay. So you have a Brood of Cloud, but it's a 3-4? It's a 3-4. Wow, so I didn't really think about it, but Jimmy is kind of playing a token deck, right? He's making food. But Brood of Cloud can turn those into creatures that do attack players. So this is a pretty shrewd play by Jimmy. Okay, um, on cast, Esper Sentinel will trigger. Do you want to pay one? Let's see here. I will not pay one. Okay, I'll draw. Will you pay one for my Rhystic Study? I won't. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to tap the Underworld Cookbook to discard a card and create a food token. Okay. And then I'm gonna tap three and cast Necromancy, targeting your Spark Double. It's interesting. And that's gonna trigger a Rhystic Study, and guess what? You get a draw a card. Yeah, buddy. This card is great because it allows me to copy a legendary creature and have both of them on the battlefield at the same time. At this point, I'm just trying to get as many creature cards out of other graveyards as possible so that when Post casts that Rise of the Dark Realms, it's not gonna hurt as much. Jimmy scared me uh, quite a bit right now. So I'm gonna have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of Brutaclad Tokor Engineer, uh, except it comes in with a plus one plus one counter. Oh, this is cool. Wow. Another Brutaclad might seem awful, but it's honestly just another big body. He just gets another token. You can't really get double haste, so it's a little bit worse, but not much. 
Okay, I will then go to combat. Both my Brood Clads will trigger, so I get two 2-1 two, Blue Mirror Artifact Creature Tokens. Mm. And then Brood Clad also says I can turn all of my tokens into mirrors. So you have four 2-1s now? Yes. And so they all have haste? They all have haste. Josh, I will swing at you with two of the mirrors, and Posty, I'll swing at you with one, and Ashlyn, I'll swing at you with one. On that attack, because of Curse of Opulence, I'll get a gold token, and so will you, Ashlyn. Yay, thank you. What blocks? Uh, no blocks, I'll take two. Going to 37. Okay, I'm not gonna block either, I will take four. Going to 35. I'm gonna eat two, and I'll go to 36. Okay, I have eight cards in my hand, so I will discard a Calibrated Blast. Pass turn to you, Ashlyn. And in return, I'm just gonna cycle this Baron Moor. Sure. All right, I'm gonna untap all the things, and Frexian Arena will trigger, so I will go down to 36, and then I will draw a card from that, and then I will draw a card for turn. I will play a Temple of the False God, and then Captive Audience. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> This card is brutal. You really don't want it to land on you because if it does, eventually, well, you're gonna have to discard your whole hand and go down to four life and that's pretty much lights out in the commander game. I am a little bit worried about captive audience, but I still have Garth, which can give me a decent chance, so I can get rid of that pretty easily. I can't give it to Josh because usually people pick the five zombies first and with double brutal clad, I don't want Jimmy to have that. Based on the current board state, I think this has to go on Jimmy. Okay, so before that resolves, it's a non-creature spell. Would you like to pay one? No. Would you like to pay one for me? No. Okay, I won't draw. At this right. point, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I don't think it does either. <laughs> and then, yeah, we get to find out who you target. I will give this to you, Jimmy. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Okay, sounds cool. I love it. I think switching to the whole token strategy really hurt me here. It made me kind of scary, and now I'm a captive audience. I guess I'm gonna have to try and find a way to win the game in the next three turns. All right, then I will go to my discard phase and I have to discard six cards. Uh, <laughs> All right, Josh, you're up. Okay, I will untap, I will draw my card for the turn. My saga will go to its final chapter, which means I get to copy each token I have with a different name. So now I have two humans, two elves, and two black lotus. Wow. <laughs> There's been three Black Lotuses, huh? <laughs> yeah, One a was a first, so. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Saga will be sacrificed. I'm gonna sack both Black Lotuses. Mm, wow. For six white mana. And then I'm gonna add two green mm. and a red, and I'm gonna play God Sire. What? Uh oh, stinky. This is a very powerful card, but normally it's a little bit slow because of summoning sickness. However, with anger in my graveyard, it has haste. And I have ways to untap it. Are you gonna pay? Uh, no, you can draw a card. And then I have one uh, white floating still, so I'll add a blue and another to it, and I'll cast Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Nice, another untapper. So this Vizier is exactly what the doctor ordered. It's another way to untap the God Sire, which means now I can use it three times. Uh, yeah, another risk study trigger, uh, you can draw. And then I'm going to tap the God Sire to make an 8-8. Then I'm gonna untap it with Kelpie Guy, make another 8-8. Untap it with Vizier of Tumbling Sands, make a third 8-8. Three eight eights with haste. The God Sire is very scary. I do have Miraki, but I still do want Garth. I guess I got some tough decisions ahead of me. And then I will go to combat. So I'm gonna swing one eight eight beast at each of you. Wow! I cannot block, so I will take eight, and I'll go to twenty eight. I can block, but I don't want to, so I'll take eight and go to twenty two. I can't block either, so I will also go to twenty eight. And I am done. Your go. So it's a big attack, I get to do a lot of damage, but what I'm really trying to do is put Posty in a tough position here. Godsire is a really juicy target for his commander, but if he untaps Miraiki, then Garth will go back to my command zone and I'll have access to it again. So it's kind of a dilemma, and either way I'm happy. I get to keep the Godsire or get access to my commander again. So Posty, I dare you to do something. Okay, untap and draw for turn. I will start by tapping Soul Ring. I will play Arcane Signet. Cool. Esper Sentinel's gonna trigger when you cast that. Uh, would you like to pay one? I'll pay the one. Okay. I'm gonna move Sword of Feast and Famine over onto Garth. Oh. Okay, I will go to combat. Zancha's going at Josh, and Garth One-Eye is going at Ashlyn. 
All right, I cannot block, so I will take seven. Going to 21. And I'll block with one of my elves. And then sort of Feast of Famine triggers. I will discard my Torment of Hellfire. Oh. And I will untap all my lands. And then, since you were attacked by an opponent, Curse of Opulence will trigger. Oh, right. And so Hosty you... will get a gold. And I also will get a gold. Ah, cool. The board state's looking pretty crazy right now, and... It's really just not something I care to deal with. Uh, the God Sire is still very scary, so I think I'm just gonna end it all by just killing all their creatures. And I'm gonna tap out uh -oh. and play Austere Command. And I will choose the two modes, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less, and destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. Just all creatures? Yes. So basically, I'm gonna try to maximize that Rise of the Dark Realm. At this point, I really don't care if my creatures die because uh, Rise is back in my hand. So let's see what happens. This is awesome. My deck doesn't run a lot of creatures, so I'm not affected. Josh is losing all those A-dates. Jimmy is saying goodbye to all those tokens, and I am free to see a clear board. This play from Posty really feels like it gets me back in the game. Thanks, man. Okay. All hail, Sir Posty. Uh, yeah! <laughs> this is pretty good for me right now because the rest of the board is looking really scary, especially after what Josh did. Also, my deck's all about graveyard recursion, so I can bring my creatures back if they die. In response, I will use the Witch's Oven to sacrifice my Spark Double. And I make two food tokens. And then I have no other responses. I got nothing. I'm good. All right, all creatures die. Wiped. Hmm. And Jimmy, I will pass to you, sir. Oh, lovely. I will untap, and on my upkeep, captive audience is going to trigger. Oof. <laughs> well, I don't like any of the options, but I think this one is the best. So everyone is going to get five two two black zombie creature tokens. <laughs> Everyone except you. Everyone right? except for me, yeah, yeah. Sad, sad. Giving everyone five zombies isn't actually that bad because in a way, no one can really use them. If they decide to swing all of them at me, then they leave themselves open for attack from the other players. But here's the thing. On my next turn, I'm gonna have to either discard my hand or go to four life because of captive audience. Either of those things happening make it almost certain that I lose the game on the spot. So I gotta make a move and I gotta make it right now. Okay, uh, and then I will draw for turn. Uh, I will pay four and cast Dread Return. Oh. And I'm going to target Imperial Recruiter. Are you going to pay for Rhystic Study? I am not going to pay for Rhystic Study, so you may draw. What a cool dude. Uh, when Imperial Recruiter enters the battlefield, I'm going to look through my library for a creature card with power two or less, put it into my hand, and then shuffle. I wonder what it is. He seems to have a plan. I'm going to reveal Dockside Extortion. Oh. Well, that's pretty good. So the first component to having an explosive turn is getting a ton of mana. My opponents, we've been cranking out artifacts and enchantments all game, so this is really great for me. And then I will tap my last two mana and cast Dockside Extortionist. Haha, <laughs> pay up. And I will not pay for Rhystic Study. I will draw. So I'm going to make 12 treasure tokens. Wow. Wow. So this is pretty scary. I just hope he doesn't have a way to like recur the Dockside because if he's able to play it a couple times in a turn, that could be a ton of mana. All right, so a lot of mana to play with all of a sudden. I am going to use four of the treasure tokens to cast Yogmoth, Thrain ah. Physician. You can't expect to find perfection without a bit of vivisection. Hail Phyrexia. Ooh. Oh yeah. I am not gonna pay for Rhystic Study, so you may draw. This is an all-star in my deck because I can sacrifice creatures, draw cards, and take down my opponent's creatures at the exact same time. And you know what's better than having Dockside Extortionist enter the battlefield and give you a bunch of mana? Doing it all over again. I am then going to pay one life, going to 21, and sacrifice the Dockside Extortionist to give a creature minus one, minus one counter. So I will target one of your zombies posts. <laughs> He is now a 1-1. One, one. I'll draw a card. And then I'm going to pay another life and do it again and sacrifice my Imperial Recruiter and put another minus one, minus one counter on that same zombie post. Okay, that zombie will die. I'll draw a card. Um, I will tap the Underworld Cookbook and discard a card and I create a food token. <laughs> Then I will tap my Witch's Oven to sacrifice Yogmoth. 
because Yagma's toughness is four or greater, I actually make two food tokens. Uh oh. I don't like it when any player voluntarily sacrifices their entire board. This is looking very sus. I'm then going to crack all eight of my treasures to make eight black mana and cast Agadim's Awakening, where X is equal to five. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to get four cards with different converted mana costs. Uh, Dockside Extortionist, Imperial Recruiter, Chainer, Nightmare Adept, and Garn of the Blood Flame. Wow. That is not good. This is exactly what my deck is designed to do. I get a bunch of value from having all these creatures enter the battlefield, then I sacrifice them, bring them all back out again, and redo the process. So I have a couple of Enter the Battlefield's triggers. When Garnet enters the battlefield, I return all creature cards in my graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. So the Yawgmoth that I sacrificed and the Brooding Moloch that I discarded both go into my hands. Yep. Whew. I'm gonna tutor for a card with Imperial Recruiter. I'm going to find Anya Falconrath. Wow. And put that into my hand. And then Dockside Extortionist is going to again make me 12 treasures. Come on. So now he gets all his stuff back and all the triggers and now has a ton of mana. Oh boy, everybody strap in. It depends on how much more recursion Jimmy has in his hand, but it's possible that he could end the game on this turn now. He's so much value from oh. that Agadim's Awakening. Mm -hmm. Rhystic study? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, on the Agadim's Awakening? No, you can draw a card. All right, now I'm gonna sacrifice four of my treasures and I'm going to recast Yogmoth Thran Physician. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm gonna sacrifice my gold token and I'm gonna cast a Viscerous here. Uh oh. I'm not gonna pay for any of the Rhystic study triggers so you can draw two cards. Okay, that's I will pay one life and sacrifice the Dockside Extortionist. And play minus one, minus one counter on one of your zombies, Josh. I'll go to 19 and draw a card. All right, that zombie's a 1-1. One, one. Yep. I'll do that again with Garn the Blood Flame. I'll go to 18. And I'll kill that zombie. Yep. I'll draw another card. Zombie down. Okay, my deck is now humming. Now I'm just trying to dig through my library and find something that's gonna hopefully get me right back into this game and stop everyone from killing me. Then I will use the Viscera Seer to sacrifice the Imperial Recruiter. And I will scry one. Feels like this stuff is coming back again. Yeah, I don't know, it's going weird, yeah. I will put that on the bottom. Then I'm gonna flash back Dread Return from my graveyard. And I will sacrifice three creatures to do so. I will not pay for the Risk Excited Trigger. And I will return a creature card from my graveyard to the battlefield, and that will be one Garner of the Blood Flame. <laughs> Garner enters the battlefield. All of the creatures that just died go back into my hand. Ooh. Ugh. Jimmy is going off right now, and it seems like this turn came out of nowhere. And I'm just sitting back, cards close to chest, hoping that I will survive. Just in long enough to play, you know, my big play. I will pay two more treasures to recast the Dockside Extortionist. Haha, <laughs> pay up. Uh, I will pay the Risk Excited Trader this time. Oh. I'll go to five treasures and I'll jump back up to 17 total. This feels like a pretty bad loop here. Yeah. I, so Jimmy is in this loop where he's sacrificing stuff, he's creating mana, drawing cards, and he's bringing the stuff back out onto the battlefield, getting the trigger again, creating more mana, drawing more cards. The, the loop at the moment doesn't seem infinite. He's using cards every time he does it. So what we gotta hope right now is that he runs out of ways to feed the flame and he can't get the creatures out of the graveyard anymore and he has to stop at some point. I am then going to spend four mana to cast Anya Falconrath. <laughs> and pay for the Rhystic Study trigger. Mm. Ugh. Okay, so Jimmy's doing a lot of stuff here, getting a lot of value. And I'm sitting here wondering if we're all dead this turn. I'm going to pay four mana to recast Yogmoth. I will cast a Viscerous Seer. Sacrifice my Dockside Extortionist. Describe one. Stop. I will then pay four mana to cast Grave Purge. So I put the Dockside Extortion on top of my library. I'll draw it back to my hand. And then he sacrifices a thing, and then he brings another thing back, and then he makes more mana, and then he sacrifices another thing. I'll use my final two mana to recast the Dockside Extortionist. I'll get 12 more mana. <sighs> Stop. And I will sacrifice five treasures, going down to seven, to recast Chainer Nightmare Adept. Oh my god, oh my god. Sacrifice the Dockside Extortionist to Yogmoth, paying a life, going to 17, we'll draw a card, give a minus one, minus one counter to one of your zombies, Ashlyn. And then he draws a card, and then he sacrifices a thing, and then he brings back more stuff. I will discard to Chainer Nightmare Adept to recast Dockside Extortionist. And I'll go back up to 16 treasures. If he does this for very much longer, this game's gonna be over. And that's 
is all I'm going to do for this turn. The turn's over? He ended it? We're still alive? Are you sure? Wow, okay. Nice. That was terrifying. <laughs> that was terrifying. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Passing the turn here. Honestly, I did not see that coming, the way that turn was going. He's still terrifying. He has a ton of mana. His board is went from nothing to tons of stuff. If he takes another turn like the one he just had, there's no way we survive it. Summer is here, and that means I'm always on the move. With the seamless Bluetooth pairing of my Raycon wireless earbuds, I can take my favorite shows and podcasts with me wherever I go, like Tolarian Community College. Plus, my Raycon sounds so good, it's like I'm in the same room with the professor. Reprints, reprints, reprints. There's never enough Magic the Gathering reprints. Raycons look and feel great, so when I'm on the road, the prof's on the road. Yeah, so I threw the deck box out of a train going 137 miles per hour. It didn't pop open, but there was a scratch, so C+. There are no cumbersome wires getting in my way, so when I'm making lunch, the prof is making lunch. Oh no, there's no more cheese. I told you, buy singles. Listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for fans of game nights, and here's what you gotta do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash nights. There you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, and it's such a good deal, you'll wanna grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash nights. That's nights with a K. Again, buyraycon.com slash nights. Actually, I think I'm gonna leave these here. Oh, thank God. Greetings, friends. It is me, everyone's favorite raging barbarian turned slightly less raging druid, Kamal. For decades, my signature look has been a shaved head, and I love it. It even got me an audition for Fast and Furious Dominaria Drift, and I almost got the part but they gave it to stupid Karn. Anyway, being bald is not the look for everyone. I believe that every man deserves a choice in his appearance and hair loss can take that away from you. For those experiencing it who aren't looking to rock the bald look, I always recommend Keeps. Keeps puts the control back in your hands. It's a simple and stress-free way to consult with a doctor and get a personalized hair loss treatment delivered straight to your door. And for $10 a month, Keeps is affordable on any budget. But it's important to act fast, as Keeps products can take four to six months to start showing results, so every second counts. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash nights to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash nights with a K to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash nights. And once you've got the hairstyle of your dreams, you'll be overrun with attention. <laughs> get it? Because I do something similar to it. Yeah, you get it. This episode is sponsored by Upstart. It's a great option for debt consolidation and relief. Upstart personal loans can really help you get out of a tough debt situation. But don't just take our word for it. Here's a real message that a fan sent us about Upstart. Chris writes... My wife and I found ourselves bogged down in more debt than we imagined. I felt like we were drowning. I had reached out to a few debt relief programs and was denied by all of them due to the fact that they were simply looking at debt and credit usage. But because of your commercial for Upstart, I reached out to them and they looked at several things outside of just the numbers and they gave us the loan and a fantastic interest rate. We're so happy Upstart helped Chris and if you're struggling with debt, Upstart might be the option you need to. Getting a rate check with Upstart only takes five minutes and you can start receiving funds the very next business day. So if debt is taking over your life, maybe it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash nights. That's upstart.com slash nights with a K. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Again, upstart.com slash nights. All right, I will untap. Upkeep trigger, Frexian Arena. I'll go down to 20. I'll draw for Arena. I'll draw for turn. So it's become abundantly clear that Jimmy is a huge problem and it will most certainly win the game if he gets to untap on his next turn. So we must kill him now. Okay, so Jimmy's a problem. Yeah, Jimmy's very, very scary if he gets another turn. Even if he rises the Dark Realms, I think Jimmy's actually worse. So how about we all focus on Jimmy? I love that. Uh, <laughs> I am going to swing out, and if I do that, I would appreciate it if no one attacks me. You're cool with me. Deal. Deal? Deal. Yes, For one turn? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh and Posty agree that Jimmy is the problem, so I got immunity from them. I can go all out and do as much damage as I can. Cool, all right, move to attacks. Okay. All zombies are coming at you, Jimmy. The before blocks, I'm gonna use my two gold and cast Terminate, targeting Yogmoth. 
In response, I will sacrifice my Dockside Extortionist, paying one life, and I'll finish off your 1-1 one, one zombie. And then I'm going to let Yogmoth get terminated. Ugh. Will you pay for Rhystic Study? No, please draw something very oh, good. Okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> okay, I will go to Blocks. I will put Garna and Anya on two of the zombies and Chainer on the third one. So I will take two damage. So I'll go to 14, Chainer will die. And two of your zombies will die because Garna and Chainer block them. All right. Wow, Ashlyn really doing good work here. Gets rid of a bunch of Jimmy's blockers and even gets some damage in on him. Is it possible we'll be able to punch through enough to take him out of this game? He does have all those food tokens, so his life total is a little higher than it looks, but maybe we have a chance now. And then I wanna play Gonti, Lord of Luxury, whose library might have something really good. Uh, Posty, I will look at your deck. Yes, ma'am. Just the top four cards. Not bad. Let me take that one. All right, you can put these at the bottom in any order. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just cast it. Okay. And the card is Deputy of Detention. Yeah! Oh, nice. All right, when it enters, it's gonna exile Garna. <laughs> Uh, in response, I'll sacrifice the Garna to the Viscera Seer, and I'll scry one. That's tasty. All right, you got rid of, like, what, four of his yeah. creatures, three of his creatures, a lot. I don't really care about my creatures dying in this deck because I can bring them back. But right now, with everyone staring me down, that means I have less blockers when Josh and Posty decide to attack me. I'm just hoping I can hold out. All right, the path is open. Yeah. Past turn. All right, so I have a very simple goal here. Just get as much damage on Jimmy this turn as possible. Luckily, I have that anger in my graveyard giving all my creatures haste. All right, I'm gonna play a Marsh Flats, and I will immediately crack it. I will find a Hallowed Fountain. That will come into play untapped. So I'll go to 32, because I also lose one from the fetch land. Then I'm going to tap seven and recast Garth One Eye. Awesome. Rhystic Study trigger you can draw. And remember, it has haste because I have anger in my graveyard. So I'll immediately tap Garth, and I will cast a Black Lotus. <laughs> That's casting a spell, so you can draw. I will draw. Pussy, thank you. Draw something sweet. But Jimmy, I don't need the token because I'm gonna immediately sack the Lotus for three white mana. With two of the white, I'm gonna play the Scion of Draco. Wow. So this card seems nuts because in a five color deck like mine, it only costs two mana. It's a four four flyer, but also gives extra abilities to all my creatures and gives all five of those things to my commander because it's five color. I love this card. And then with the one white floating, I'm gonna cast Ephemerate, targeting my Garth one eye. Are you paying? No, you can go ahead and draw. Yes, sir. Garth will blink out and come back untapped. And also I could name Black Lotus again if I wanted to now. You're right. So this card is really good in my deck because not only does it untap my commander, but also because it exiled and came back, it actually forgets all the cards you named the previous time and you can name any card you want again. It kind of resets the list. So it's just a really efficient effect to have in my deck. The Ephemerate I will place over here just so I remember because it has rebound. Uh, and then I will go to combat and Jimmy, I'm gonna swing at you with everything. Okay, so how much total damage is that, Josh? It is 17. Josh is swinging at me for lethal, and I do have food tokens, so that means I'm not gonna die immediately. However, I got something in my hand that I think is a little better. Okay, um, in response, mm. I'm going to tap Anya Falconrath and discard from under the floorboards. Ugh. And it's a card with madness. I'm gonna cast it for X is equal to 14. So I'm gonna gain 14 life and make 14 tapped 2-2 two -two zombies. Ugh. That's really bad. And just when we think it can't get any worse, Jimmy puts 14 zombies onto the field and gains 14 life. This is getting out of hand. Anya Falconrath is going to untap, and then I'm gonna draw a card from Anya. Uh, Rhystic Study triggers, you can draw off it okay. most. And I'm gonna put the Viscera Seer in front of one of your zombies. And before damage, I will sacrifice the Viscera Seer to itself to scry one. And I'm not gonna block anything else. Okay, so you take 15. And I'm gonna go to 13 life. And I'm gonna gain 11 from the zombies and Garth's lifelink. And I'll end up at 43. Okay, that's it, you can go ahead. So I'm not feeling great at the end of this turn because not only does Jimmy gain the life, but now he has a ton of zombies that he can use to kill us with next turn. We were saying we have to take Jimmy out before he untaps. Now we really gotta take him out. Problem is I just did everything I can do. So Post Malone, help us. 
Okay, I will untap, draw for turn. I think I know what I'm going to do. I do want to play Rise of the Dark Realms, and that was my plan. But now that Jimmy's board has just snapped off, I think it's important to get rid of him this turn or else we're all dead. I'm gonna start by equipping the Sword of Feast and Famine to a zombie token. Okay. And then I will play San Quan, Lord of Wood. <laughs> Horsemanship! Whoa! This card is crazy. It gives horsemanship to all of Posty's creatures. He's gonna be able to knock Jimmy out because none of his creatures are going to be able to block. Horsemanship? Horsemanship? Let's go. This is so good. Does anybody have any horsemanship? I just wanna make sure. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you fool! You should have put all of your creatures onto horseback. But no, you have no horsemanship. You you are going to get knocked out now. And then I'm gonna attach the lightning grease to Sun Quan, Lord of Wu. And Jimmy, I'm gonna come at you yep. for everything. Oh my god. Unblockable, super flying. Okay, um, well, I am going to not block anything. And die. Woo! Threat eliminated. And then I died too. Do you hear that? It sounds like a bunch of, a bunch of coconuts being clacked together. Oh no, ah, triple! Bodied. <laughs> wow, that was a super close one. Good job team, good job everybody. Now uh, let's commence killing each other. Sword of Feast and Famine will trigger. I will untap all of my lands. And then I am going to play my commander, Mariaki. She's back. She's, She's big, back. big, big back. And then I will quip Lightning Greaves Ooh. to Mariaki. And I will tap Mariaki yep. to steal Scion of Draco. Okay, yeah, pretty sweet. That's that a cool is, card. It's a very yeah, cool card. Yeah, that's a cool card. At this point of the game, I'm feeling pretty good. Rise of the Dark Realms, in my hand. Everything I have on the field is unblockable. I'm feeling like a $100 bill. I will tap a command tower, tap an underground sea, and I will demonic tutor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was feeling pretty good when Jimmy got taken out. I was feeling hopeful, but now Posty just stole one of my best creatures, tutored for the best card in his deck. So I gotta admit, it's not looking real good. I'm farther behind than I thought I was gonna be. And then I will find a card and put it in my hand. Okay. I'm tapped out. I will pass to you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I will untap. Uh, Frexton Arena will trigger. I'll go to 19. I will draw from Arena. I will draw for turn. Well, I'm gonna play a Temple of the False God, and then I will move to combat. I'm going to swing Gonti at you, Josh, and I'm going to send a zombie at you, Posty, and then leave some blockers back. On that attack, I will get a gold token from Curse of Opulence. I love gold! Mm. <laughs> and then I will take two. I will go to 26. Yep, I don't like that death touch, so I won't block. And go to 41. Nice. And then I'm going to play Right of the Raging Storm. Oh. Whoa. I used a lot of my resources last turn trying to take out Jimmy, so I'm hoping this card will at least encourage Josh and Posty to focus on each other and maybe buy me some time to get back in the game. Okay, now, are you gonna pay? No, there's no point. All right, I will pass turn. Okay, on your end step, I'm gonna tap Garth one eye and I'm gonna make a Black Lotus. And when I cast that, I won't pay for Rhystic Study, so you can draw Posty. Okay. All right, and then I'll go to my turn. On upkeep, there are two triggers, Right of the Raging Storm, so I will get a 5-1 elemental token. And then also the rebound trigger on Ephemerate will go off, so I will cast that for free, targeting Garth one eye. So the Ephemerate, because it has rebound, it's gonna blink my Garth, and that means it'll untap it which means I'll be able to either activate it again or attack with it. So just a lot of value out of that one card. I'm gonna maintain priority when I do that, and I'm going to tap Garth One-Eye in response. And I'm gonna choose Shivan Dragon. Yes! So I get to make a token copy of Shivan Dragon, but it costs six mana. Oh, the biggest, yeah. baddest creature in all of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, yeah, Back in the day, it seemed so broken. I gotta say, it's cool to have a Shivan Dragon on my battlefield. I don't think I've had one there since like 1993. And 5-5 Flyer with Fire Breathing, still pretty relevant, even to this day. It's gonna do some work on this board. So my plan here is to get enough damage that I'm lethal to either player, and then I can use that to politic with them and maybe buy myself a turn to get back into this game, equalize my board state, or at least blunt the rise of the Dark Realms. 
And then Ephemera is gonna resolve blinking my Garth Hold one on. eye. I'm gonna cast Varaska's Contempt on Garth. Uh... So this is kind of an odd spot for removal, but here's my thinking. I'd like to hold up a kill spell for that Sun Quan if Posty ever decides to swing at me. But because Scion gives all of his blue creatures hexproof, that's not really an option. So instead, I'm going to use this card to slow down Josh so he can't kill either me or Post and hopefully keep those two fighting while I try to rebuild. All right, Garth gets exiled. Garth Brooks. <laughs> I gain two life. Oof. So Garth is gone, and I am so grateful, and I owe Ashlyn a steak dinner because I'm still in this game, and now we realize that Josh really has to go. So losing my commander here is a huge blow because I needed that amount of damage to be able to threaten lethal to Post Malone to bring him to the table politically. It actually brings Ashlyn out of lethal as well because I can't attack her with that Lightning Rager token. So now I just can't threaten to kill anybody. So I have no bargaining power. Power. This was a huge blow. Oh, that messes up my plan. Risk Exciting trigger? Will you pay for Risk Exciting? I will pay this time. Mm, yes, ma'am. We draw the line at 35 cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess I'll go to combat. All right, I'm gonna go Shiv and Dragon at you, Ashlyn, and then two zombies and a Lightning Ranger at you, Post Malone. Mm, so I will take nine. And go down to 17. And I will take five. I have no flyers. Yeah. Minus 16. And then I'm going to crack my Lotus for three white and add one, and I'll play Search the Premises. Sure. Are you paying for a success? You can draw. Okay. All right, and then that's all I can do. I'll pass the turn. So I'm a little dejected at the end of this turn because I was hoping to be able to pull some political tricks and buy myself maybe a little bit of time, but I wasn't able to do that. On his turn, Posty's almost certainly going to cast Rise of the Dark Realm. And because of summoning sickness, he's probably not going to be able to kill me on his turn. So I'm likely to get another untap. Maybe I can figure a way out of this. It's a long shot, but it's a chance. At the end of your turn, you actually get to sacrifice that elemental. Oh, right, yep. Yeah. I get to. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you but, have to. Yeah, but. yeah. I will untap. And on my upkeep, I will get a 5 1 Lightning Rager. Nice. I'm going to play, watch this, an island. Nice. Ooh. Nice. That's a good start. I, I'm crazy. So 17 life is not a lot. It is a scary life total and the board state is terrifying. But I've had this one trick up my sleeve and I've been waiting for the right time to use it. And I will sack my gold to add one mana of any color. Oh. You guys already know what's coming. <laughs> Rise of Dark Realms. That is only the beginning. Okay, so all creatures from all graveyards, you get them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my, my gosh. We knew this was coming. He's gonna get a ton of stuff here. It's unlikely he's gonna kill both of us, so he's probably gonna kill Josh first, right? Ashton, what creature card do you have in your graveyard? Treasure Nabber. Oh, yeah. I only have one. This whole time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what do you got? Yeah, I have a lot more than one. So you're gonna get Esper Sentinel, God Sire. <laughs> Ignoble Hierarch, Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Anger, Brudiclad, Bloodline Keeper, Sylvala, Kelpie Guy, Kelpie Guy! <laughs> and a Spark Double. So that's 10 from me. Wow. And then in my graveyard, Myojin of Night's Reach and a Phyrexian Metamorph. Okay, that is a lot of stuff, and it's mostly out of my graveyard. Still, I do think we're gonna live. I think we're gonna get one more chance here. Maybe we can draw a board wipe and reset this board and get back in it. Okay, so what do you want Spark Double to be a copy of when it comes in? I think Spark Double's gonna have to come in as a copy of my commander. Oh, nice. Really nice. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it's a gets a plus one plus one counter. And then I will have Phyrexian Metamorph become a copy of Lightning Greaves. The Lightning Greaves really give me a chance right now to take full advantage of the board state. I feel pretty good at this point. I got every creature from every graveyard. I'm gonna try and find a way to win this game right now. And then I will put my copy of Lightning Greaves on Godsire. Oh. <laughs> Tap it. So you're gonna make an 8-8? Eight, eight? An 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh my gosh. And then I will move the Lightning Greaves over to Kelpie Guide. And then I'll tap the Kelpie Guide, and I'll untap the God Sire. I will move the Greaves back. I also have the Vizier, so I can do this another time. You see what I'm doing here. Right, yeah. so yeah, yeah. you're gonna get three 8-8s? Eight yes. 
So now he's able to make a bunch of 8-8s, eight and he's got Brutoclad from my graveyard, so all his tokens actually have haste. Because it's on Quan, they are gonna have horsemanship, so they will be unblockable. Can he make enough of them to take us both out? And the last thing I will do is take my copy of Lightning Greaves, put it onto the copy of my commander to take one of your blockers, Josh. Okay, so you get another zombie token. Oh no. And then I will move the Lightning Greaves copy to Myogen, and then I will move the OG Lightning Greaves <laughs> to Brutoclad. And at the beginning of my combat, Brutoclad will trigger. And I'll make a 2-1 blue mirror artifact creature token. Oh, those zombie tokens that Jimmy gave out earlier are really coming back to haunt us now because he's gonna turn them all into 8-8s. I'm counting it up. He definitely can take out one of us. And then I will turn all of my tokens into 8-8 eight, eight beasts. <laughs> so you have 10 8-8s eight, eights now? Yes, sir. So 80 damage. I think he can take out both of us. And they all they have horsemanship. horsemanship. I think we're dead. I'm just gonna uh, attack <laughs> you guys yep. with everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of that has summoning sickness, but we're still dead. And then I died to a bunch of 8-8 eight, eight beasts riding horses. <laughs> No, I'm over here! Now they always say congratulations! And I win the game. I promise Josh it's not gonna be a dad, but it's gonna be a dad! <laughs> This game was incredible. It was so much fun to be able to play with Josh, Jimmy, and Post Malone, of all people. One of the coolest people on the planet plays and loves our game, and not just our game, but our format. I used to be afraid about telling other people about playing Magic the Gathering because you'd get labeled as a nerd, or it's not cool, or you're a total geek or a dork, but those labels don't matter. You know, Magic the Gathering is an incredible game. I've been a fan for my whole life, and I want to say a quick shout out to Josh and Alex from Oasis Games and everybody out there for um, showing me the beauty that is Commander. Magic has the ability to bring people together, no matter where you're from, who you are, what you love, and I think that's the coolest part. Woo! Oh, all right. Well, first time on the show by Posty and first time destroying us. Yeah, he completely swept us under the rug. And uh, you know what? I'll lose the post any day of the week. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, what a great guy. And I don't know if everybody out there noticed, but at the beginning of this episode, we had a new main title sequence for the show. And the music during that sequence was actually composed and created by Post Malone. Wow, and theme that, music by yeah, Post Malone? That's the reason we did the whole do sequence. We were like, well, okay, well, if our theme music is by <laughs> Post Malone, then uh, we need better main titles. Yep, we did it. We have peaked as a show. All downhill from here. All downhill from here. <laughs> uh, now, some of you might be sticking around because you know that we always give away stuff on this show, but this time around, well, it's extra special. While Posty was here, well, we had to have him sign some product around the office, so this time around, oh, you can win some amazing stuff. Yeah, he's signed uh, all of our different playmats. We've had three over the years, and also we had him sign a bunch of Rise of the Dark Realms cards. In fact, there are a few foil Rise of the Dark Realms signed by Post Malone in there, too, so there's a ton of stuff to win more than normal and probably more uh, valuable than normal as yeah. well. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Jimmy, how do they enter? All right, super simple. There are three ways to enter. The first way to enter is on Twitter. Go ahead and send out a tweet using the hashtag Game Nights and link to this episode of the show. Say anything you want, and Blamo, that is your entry there. If you're on Facebook, find your way to our Facebook page. Find the post that we made for this episode, and in the comments, tag a friend that you think might want to watch it, and that's how you enter there. Your friend that's the biggest Post Malone fan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finally, on Instagram, go and make a post, use the hashtag Game Nights, and post whatever you want, and that's how you enter there. Pretty simple. Three different ways to enter, and you can enter all three ways for three entries into the giveaway. Yeah, I would say for this one, definitely it would be smart to enter all three different ways, because that's... If you can, yeah. Yeah, that's three times the chance to win. That's just math. And don't forget, you only have one week from the release date of this episode of Game Nights to enter. After that, we will announce the winners across our social platforms, and someone's going to get some sweet, sweet swag. Yeah, once we announce the winners, um, you, you can't win anymore. We've already announced the winners. That's how it works. Yeah, one week. Get in there on all three social platforms. Enter. You want to get this signed stuff by Post Malone. Uh, you, you definitely want your hands on it. It's a piece of Game Nights history. Yeah. 
And who knows, maybe if Post Malone comes back in the future, you can get more swag. But until then, this is your only chance to get it. <laughs> I hope he comes back. I hope so, too. Because I want a second shot at beating him. Yeah, I don't want to lose that same way. That was, <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.